Ultra Space Wormhole Alert. New Ultra Beasts are incoming starting on May 23rd at 10 a.m. to May 28th at 8 p.m. The Marini Shiny family will also be debuting during this event, as will the Ultra Beast Stack Attacka and Blacephalon, who are both coming to five star raids for the first time in Pokemon Go. The Ultra Beast can't be shiny until Go Fest, which is actually not a long turnaround between release and shiny release, so that's kind of nice. Also, the Ultra Beast will be region locked in the Eastern Hemisphere. You'll get Stack Attacka and Blacephalon will be in the Western Hemisphere. Here's a map with the dividing line. If you're in some places right on the border between the two hemispheres, you might be lucky enough to get both of them in raids. I'll go over their meta relevancy a little bit later in this video, as well as the meta relevancy for the other new Ultra Beast coming during this event, which is Naga Nadel. Yes, if you have a Poi Pole, you will be able to evolve it to Naga Nadel starting during this event. You will need 200 Poi Pole candies, and you will have to catch 20 Dragon types with that Poi Pole as your buddy. Now, catching 20 Dragon types is not an easy task. However, there will be quite a few Dragons out for this event, so let's take a look at the event details. There's there's only one bonus and it is two times XP for winning Ultra Beast raids, which is whatever. But let's talk about how to get some dragons so that you can evolve Poi Pole into Naga Nadel. First off, in the wild encounters, we will have Ekans, Zubat, Tentacool, Coughing, Stunky, Krogunk, Trubbish, Skrelp, Marini, and then rarer encounters for Dratini. So Dratini as a rare spawn will get you a dragon catch towards evolving your Poi Pole, as long as you have it as your buddy when you catch that Dratini. Also, everything here can be shiny, including for the first time in Pokemon Go, Marini, which is a nice shiny, so one I will definitely be hunting during this event. And then in the raids, we will have a few more dragons, so let's take a look at those, starting with the one-star raids, where we will have Peldean Wooper, Hisuian Quillfish, Hisuian Sneasel, Bagon, and Dino. Then in the three-star raids, we're going to have Galarian Weezing, Dredagon, and Turtonator. And then in the five-star raids, in the eastern hemisphere, there will be Stack Attacka. And in the western hemisphere, there will be Blacephalon. And then in the mega raids, we will have Mega Pidgeot. Now, Turtonator and Drudagon are both dragon types in the three star raids, which can be soloed fairly easily with these encounters, which I will go over in the tips section of the video. And then Bagon and Dino in the one star raids are also dragon encounters and should be pretty easy for anybody to solo. So that means if you don't have anybody to raid with, you can at least hit these ones up with your free daily pass and get some dragon catches that way. Okay, now let's take a look at the field research where there is going to be a couple more dragons. So in the field research, we are going to have tasks that will get us encounters with Nidoran, both male and female form. Trubbish, Marini, and then rarer encounters for Gumi and Jangmoo. Now everything here can be shiny except for Jangmoo, which has its shiny debut during GoFest. And then Gumi and Jangmoo are both dragon catches as well. And Gumi can be shiny, so not a bad one to hunt depending on how difficult those tasks are. Also during this event, the final part of the seasonal special research story will open up to all trainers. Completing it will get you XP, rare candy, mysterious components, encounters with event themed Pokemon, and some Poi Pool candy. So this is definitely a good one to focus on completing to evolve your Poi Pole into Naga Nadel. Then there will be a $5 USD paid timed research as well for this event. The rewards for that will include four premium battle passes, one lucky egg, some other miscellaneous items, and then encounters with Marini and the Naga Nadel wings avatar item. This research is only really worth it if you want the wings, which are pretty cool, and there will be other Naga Nadel themed avatar items coming out in the shop at the same time. Honestly, I like the wings and the jacket, but also keep in mind if you do buy it, this research is timed, so you have to complete it and claim the rewards before the event ends on May 28th at 8 p.m. or they're gone forever. There will also be collection challenges which are going to reward XP and encounters with the new shiny potential Marini and of course we're also going to have showcases for this event as well. Okay, let's jump into some tips for raid counters, megas, and candies, and then we'll get into the meta relevancy for the Pokemon that are going to be out during this event. All right, so for raid counters, let's start with those one-star dragons. Honestly, for any of these, just throw in your best ice, fairy, or dragon types. They should go down no problem. They're one-star raids, as long as your counters are at a fairly decent level. Now, of course, the counters are the same for those three-star dragons. However, because they're a three-star raid, if you want to try to solo them, you want to bring your best counters possible. So let's go over what some of those best counters are going to be for the three star dragons. So for Dredagon, the top counters are going to be Mega Rayquaza, Mega Garchomp, Mega Gardevoir, or Mega Salamence for Mega, then Origin form Dialga and Palkia, Shadow Salamence, Shadow Garchomp, Shadow Dragonite, and Shadow Mamoswine are also good. And then for some more budget options, you can use any of the Mega or Shadow forms I mentioned
mentioned in their non-Mega or Shadow form, plus Haxorus, Baxcalibur, or Togekiss. For Turtonator, your top counters are going to be Primal Groudon, Mega Ray, Mega Garchomp, Mega Salamence, or Mega Latios for a Mega or Primal, then Origin form Palkia, Shadow Salamence, Shadow Garchomp, Shadow Dragonite, or Shadow Groudon. For some more budget options, the non-Mega and non-Shadow forms of the ones I just mentioned work, or you could also go with Rhyperior, Haxorus, Tyrantrum, or Rampardos. In terms of the best Mega to use to gain candy, Dragons are weak to dragon type attacks, so Mega Evolve any of the dragons that I mentioned that are good counters, and not only will they help you take down the raid boss, but they'll help you get some more candies as well. Now, if you're going to do some Ultra Beast raids, just remember that they cannot be shiny until Go Fest, but of course, you can still get candies and you can still get hundos. So, if you are looking to do some raids before Go Fest, let's start with the best counters, starting with Stack Attacker. It is rock and steel, so fighting and ground will both do 256% damage, so definitely go with your top fighting or ground types. Some top options for that include Primal Groudon, Mega Garchomp, Mega Heracross, or Mega Blaziken with a fighting moveset. Then there's Shadow Groudon, Shadow Garchomp, Shadow Excadrill, Keldeo, Terrakion, and Groudon are all good options. And then some budget options include non-Shadow or non-Mega versions of the previous Mon, as well as Conkeldur and Machamp. And then some top Megas for improving your candy gains would be Mega Aerodactyl, Mega Tyranitar, Mega Diancie, Mega Steelix, Mega Scissor, or Mega Aggron. Just remember to use whichever one you have at the highest Mega level, as that will get you the most amount of candy and the best chance at Candy XL. Now for Blacephalon, as a Ghost Fire type, there is no counter that does more than 160% damage, but of those, Dark, Rock, Ground, and Water have some powerful options for counters, including Primal Kyogre, Primal Groudon, Mega Tyranitar with the Dark moveset, Mega Garchomp, or Mega Swampert for Primal or Mega Counters. Then Shadow Titar, Shadow Kyogre, or Shadow Rhyperior are also good options. And for some budget counters, you can go with Tyranitar, Hydreigon, Garchomp, and Rhyperior. Now some top Megas or Primals for improving candy gains would include Mega Houndoom, Mega Blaziken, Mega Gengar, Mega Banette, or Primal Groudon. And again, use whichever one you have that is at the highest Mega or Primal level. Also for any of the Pokemon you are catching, including those from raids, you can use Pineapps for 2 times the candy or Silver Pineapps for 2.33 times the candy. And then another good option for getting more candy for Pokemon is to save them and trade them with a friend. Trading Pokemon does get you more candy, and the farther apart the Pokemon were caught, the more candy you will get. And if it is over 100 kilometers, you'll also get a guaranteed Candy XL for that Pokemon that you're trading away. Okay, that's it for counters and candy tips. Now let's go over what meta relevant Pokemon are going to be out during this event. We'll start with a few quick shout outs. Some of these Pokemon are better in shadow form. I'll let you know which ones, but you can still use this event to farm candies for them so that you have enough candies to power them up. To kick it off, we have Golbat, which evolves from Zubat and has some play in the Great League, but it does rank better as a shadow. We have Tentacruel from Tentacool, which ranks in the top 30 for Ultra League. Skunk Tank from Stunky ranks in the top 100 as a shadow for Ultra League. Toxicroak from Krogunk ranks around the 60 mark as a shadow in Ultra League, but you can run the non-shadow as well. Clawzire from Paldean Wooper ranks about 20 in the Great League. Overquill from Hisui and Quillfish ranks about 130 in both Great League and Ultra League. Kneezler from Hisui and Sneasel has some play in all the leagues, but as a shadow. Galarian Weezing has some play in Ultra League. Toxapec from Marini ranks number 37 in the Great League, and again, shiny debut during this event, so a good one to hunt for sure. Now, Dredagon and Turtonator aren't really meta relevant, but if you really like these Pokemon and want to try using them for something, you can try them out in the Great and Ultra League. All right, now into some of the bigger stuff. We have Degralgy from Skrelp, which ranks around 50 in the Ultra League and about 120 in the Great League. We also have Mega Pidgeot in the Mega Raids. It is a decent flying type attacker in Mega form, but if you have Mega Rayquaza, that's far superior as a raid attacker. However, it's still good to have a high IV Pidgeot to Mega in case an event features normal and flying types, and you can Mega it to boost candy for both of those types. Honestly, it's good to have one of each Pokemon that can Mega Evolve for that very reason. All right, then we also have Komo, -O, which evolves from Jangmo -O and ranks in all the open leagues, but keep in mind, it can't be shiny until Go Fest, though, if you plan to raid it during this event. We also have Gudra, which evolves from Gumi and ranks ranks in all the open leagues as well, and it can be shiny, so definitely a good one to go after. It will likely get a community day soon though, so might not want to drop too many raid passes on it, but if you need to use up one or two of your daily passes and have a Gumi raid nearby, that would definitely be a good way to not waste a daily pass by not using it. We also have Salamats from Bagon, which also has a Mega 
end the game. That is a good dragon type raid attacker and sees play in the Master League as well in a non-mega form. Just keep it as bag on until you can evolve it for the legacy move Outrage. The latest you will be able to get it is December Community Day as bag on did have a calm day classic this year. We also have Hydragun from Dino. It's a good dark type raid attacker and it also has some play in the Master League. And then at stage one Evolutions Wireless also has some play in the Great League. Okay, now let's talk about those Ultra Beasts starting with Stack Attacka. It is a wonderfully unique looking Pokemon that can't be shiny until Go Fest and that sadly is not meta relevant at all. Blacevalon though is a bit of a different story. It does rank number seven as a ghost type raid attacker and if it ever gets access to a better ghost type fast move it would likely jump up a bit more in the rankings as well. And then as a fire type it does rank lower around 15. Incinerate is a powerful fast move but it's also slow and Blacevalon is a bit squishy so it can be hard to get enough fast moves out with such a squishy Pokemon. However Mystical Fire does fill up decently fast and at some point it's likely to get access to its signature fire move, Mind Blown. So that could bump it up significantly in the rankings, depending on the move's stats, mainly how spammy it will be because of Blacephalon's low bulk. But for newer players, this could be a really good one to go after as it could pull double duty as a ghost and fire type raid attacker. Now in terms of PvP, PV Poke released the rankings while I was editing this video. So instead of giving my estimate of how Blacephalon stacks up against Shadow Chandelure, the other ghost fire type it would be competing against in GBL, I can tell you it ranks only slightly higher at 143 over Shadow Shandy's 169. So if you have a Shadow Chandelure built, Blacephalon would basically fill the same role and you just have to spend a bunch of Stardust. If you don't have a Shadow Chandelure built and you get a good IV Blacephalon, then you might as well build that if you want one as it ranks a bit higher. Then we also have Poipol's Evolution Nugget Adele releasing during this event. In terms of a raid attacker, it is severely outclassed as a dragon because of the sheer power already present in the dragon typing. However, as a poison type, it ranks third, currently just behind Mega Beedrill and Nihiligo, so you could invest in it as a poison type raid attacker, because even when things like Eternatus are released, it will still rank highly. However, poison types aren't often needed in Pokemon Go. A lot of times another type will do the same job better, think fire on grass. So I probably wouldn't make this one a high priority to power up if you're low on Stardust. Now in terms of PvP for Nugget Adele, it does look like a bit of a bust. Single digit wins, this thing looks to lack any sting in PvP. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing for more Pokemon Go news, tips, and live streams. If you want more Pokemon Go content right now, check out one of the videos on screen. Happy hunting, I hope you get all the beautiful ultra beasts you can battle and we'll see you in the next one friends i've got something incredibly funky